everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about five mistakes that I made whilst building my art career. I've been building my art business for the last five years, so naturally during that time I have made lots of mistakes and things that I would just do differently if I knew what I now know. So for those of you that are currently in the process of starting your own art business or thinking about having a career in art, I thought this video would be useful so that you know these things to avoid doing yourself. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I think the biggest mistake that I made throughout my whole art career was putting off doing new things because of being scared of failure. And I think that this is a common thing that a lot of us do, not only for art or growing an art business, but, but for any career or any hobby or just any aspect of life. We put off doing things because we're scared to fail and we don't start new things because we think we'll fail and we'll be worried about how we'll look to our friends, to our family, and we care about their opinion. And so we put off doing these things because we don't wanna look stupid if if we fail. And so many times I put off doing big business decisions like starting my Patreon for example because I was scared that it would fail. So I put off starting Patreon for god at least a year or so and I just kept putting it off and making excuses of why it would be better to start it later on in my career and it was just because I was scared of failure. I was scared that no one would join, that no one would be interested in it, and I was just scared of looking bad, of, of, I was scared of failing, basically. And I think as I've gone through my art business and my art career, I now just do things and I wait to see if I fail. And even if I do fail, that's not a problem. It's actually really good to fail because then you learn and every mistake that you make is something that you're learning from. So I have no problem with making mistakes now. So for those of you that may be putting off starting your art career, starting that social media account, starting that art channel on YouTube and you're making loads of excuses and really it's just down to fear of failure, I just recommend getting started because most of those worries don't come to fruition anyway. Most of the time you have nothing to worry about. And even if you do fail, at least you gave it a try. The second mistake that I made was doing too many different things at once. I wanted to launch this product and do this. Mainly the problem was doing too many social media at once. I wanted to do YouTube, do Twitter, do Facebook, do Instagram, do them all and do everything. I wanted to do a vlog channel and a normal channel. And when you do too many things at once, you're not really doing any of them well. It's better to focus on a few different things or a handful of manageable ventures rather than just doing 20 different things sort of half-assed really. So I recommend if that's your problem, if you're just doing way too many things and you're trying to do everything, try and scale it back because you can't grow everything really well and you can't put your all into 20 different things. Focus and try and prioritize on the, the most important things and the things that are gonna scale your business or art career the most and focus on them and really try and build a strategy where you're prioritizing certain things and where you're figuring out what's the most important for your art career and just focus on those things don't try and do 15 different things you might be thinking at the moment that if you try and do everything then that's surely the best way to go but you can't put a good amount of time into 15 different things so it's better just to focus on a couple of things and do them really well the third mistake that I made was ignoring the importance of a website and mailing list I was focusing a lot on YouTube and social media, but the problem with those social media networks is that you don't have any control of your audience. And what I mean by that is basically if YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook went down tomorrow, not that it would, but if it did, then you'd lose your entire audience. You have no control over them or way to reach them. But having a website or mailing list is great because that is something that you are in control of. You have control over your website domain and your mailing list. So if anything happened, you have a backup plan of where people can find you and you don't lose all of your business. 
So a mailing list is something that I've been focusing a lot on over the last few months in particular, and I've definitely learned the importance of it, and I was undervaluing a mailing list so much. But it's great because it's a place where I have direct communication with my audience and I can directly update my audience and talk to you guys through my mailing list and through emails. And it just gives you a bit more peace of mind because you know that if everything went down tomorrow, your email list and those contacts is still something that you have and you don't lose your entire audience. So it gives you a little bit of stability. And the same thing with a website. I didn't make a website for the longest time. I think it's only been the last year or so that I started a website, even though I knew it was something that I should do. For some reason, I was just putting it off saying it's not that important. But it is super important because it's a hub where if someone wants to check out everything you have to offer or everything you're doing, they can just go there and look at what you are currently doing, what products you have to offer, what things you're selling or your different social medias, everything like that you can put in one place. So it's definitely important to have a website as a hub where anyone can find you and if they Google you, it will come up so that you don't lose your business because people can't find you. Mistake number four is self-promoting on other people's content. Now this is the mistake that I am the most embarrassed about because it really is not good. You don't want to do this. So. I'm talking about the annoying people. Yes, I was one of them at the start. I'm not talking about any time recently. I'm talking about when I was 16, 17, I was starting off on YouTube and I was posting on other people's videos, other people's content, doing the classic, check out my channel, check out my drawing of this. And it's super annoying and I realized, well, I realized a long time ago, but you realize now just how counterproductive that strategy is because not only do you look super spammy but it actually turns off anyone from even wanting to check out your content you make a really bad reputa reputation for yourself and you lose that bond with the creator that's creating that content because it's so disrespectful to go onto someone else's content whether that's under someone's instagram post or twitter their tweet or a YouTube video and just say, check out my stuff, check out my stuff. It's really, really disrespectful and it's really annoying and no one will really go and check out what you have to offer anyway because it is spammy, but also you are annoying the content creator as well. So if you ever did grow, you've probably created a really bad bond there and they wouldn't wanna work with you anyway. And also things like sub for sub, they don't work. You're not gonna get any loyal fans that way. So they're not even worth doing it. It's best to just grow organically because if you are putting out valuable content, then naturally people want to watch you. And that is something that I did learn very early on. And I think I was only doing that for probably my first couple of videos. And then my 17 year old brain realized that that probably wasn't the best thing to do. Mistake number five is not taking deposits for commissions. I haven't done commissions in the longest time, but it was something that I did early on in my career. I did do a lot of family pet, por family pet portraits, family portraits and pet portraits. And so I did a lot of commissions back then and I didn't know a lot about business or deposits or anything like that. So I didn't take deposits. And I did learn the hard way that if you don't take deposits, you can work super hard on a drawing or painting and then someone just ignores you. Either they ignore you or they don't wanna pay you and you've put in all of that time into your artwork. So what I do recommend doing is something like half up front before you start and then half when the commission is done. Also make sure that you get the payment before you send away the artwork if you're shipping it out, that's really important it's important to take a deposit because it shows that the customer is really serious about the commission. If they're willing to put half up front, then it shows that they are 
really, really serious about what they want you to do. And so those are the five mistakes that I made building my art career. Of course, there's many others, but those are the five main ones that came to mind when I was thinking about this topic. I'd love to know in the comments section if you want to see more videos like this and what sort of business topics you want to see videos on. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here and even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.